Joining us now, live from Cairo, is NBC Nightly News anchor and managing editor Brian Williams, also NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. They are looking over this scene that you're seeing right here, uh, live right now. R Richard, Richard, how is the situation at this, the October 6th Bridge in Tahrir Square? How has it evolved over this past hour and a half? Very rapidly, and uh, it appears now to be somewhat over. What we saw together was the, if you could call it a victory moment, a climax of the day's events. The protesters who want Mubarak out, who've been in Tahrir Square all day, who've been attacked and fighting back against Mubarak supporters, burst out of Tahrir Square and forced the Mubarak supporters to leave. Those Mubarak supporters left with some protected protection from the army, those smoke screens you were talking about. And then after that, we saw what was perhaps the most chaotic scenes of the day as bands from both sides were chasing each other through the streets as the, this anger was spilling out across Cairo. There were vigilantes stopping cars, beating people we saw on camera. Some were set on fire. They were letting other, pushing other cars uh, to the edge of the road, also setting them on fire. The army firing intense warning shots. There have been other gunshots from, uh, it's unclear who's been firing them that we've heard from, from rifles in several different locations, like that one. The, um, what we're seeing now, the crowds are thinner. They are not apparently chasing each other around as much, but it is not over. Uh, sometimes small crowds can be even more dangerous than big ones. They're mobile, they're close to each other, not in the camera shot right now, but to this side, to the east, if you come around you can see there is yet another small Molotov cocktail battle with, I guess you could call these the stragglers, the last people who are here, and if you're in a big fight like this, it is a very dangerous place to be the last person. Both sides are tired. They don't have a lot of protection. They don't have a lot of support. This fight is spilled out of the contained area where it was and is still continuing in, in South Rio uh, and around the, the, the bridges that we've seen. Not the same kind of numbers. It's unclear if they will continue doing this throughout the night. Both sides expect reinforcements are going to come tomorrow. So we could have a situation where unless there is a major intervention by someone, most likely the armed forces, we can see this kind of thing continuing. It is already starting to get light here, continuing throughout the day. Richard, what we just saw there with um, people throwing Molotov cocktails off the elevated roadway, sort of the start up to the bridge there, they're throwing those Molotov cocktails down onto people who are below them? Or is that where, what's, what's below them in terms of people not participating in the fight, but potentially being victims of it? Um, the people below, and there is a terrain that has been chosen now, and I think we're going to see this terrain develop over time. The people below, and there's a lot more Molotov cocktails being fired right now, are the protesters. They're the ones who are in Tahrir Square, penned into Tahrir Square at one stage today, and the people who have chosen the high ground have been Mubarak supporters. The, they are firing down with these Molotov cocktails to try and land them and, and have them explode in a, in a bottle of fire. These are glass bottles filled with gasoline right on the protesters. I've seen them hit a few over the last several hours, and the other protesters put them to the ground, rolled them around, and tried to put the fire out. We're being told by hospital officials most of the injuries uh, so far have been stones and bricks to the head and burns. Is one side in this fight more tactically efficient, more professional at fighting than the other side? I think not really. They, uh, came, they came in, the, the, uh, the anti-government, the, the pro-Mubarak demonstrators, the ones who came and charged the protesters this morning, had a degree of sophistication of their movement. They sealed off the entrances to the square. They arrived in unison. They had a clear purpose. They were clearly led by a single military-style commander. Now there are not enough of them to have that, have that tactical advantage, so it's really just groups throwing Molotov cocktails onto other groups throwing Molotov cocktails back. The real fear, I think, is that there will be an escalation of force.
There will be new weapons that will be brought into this fight today. People are clever, to, to use an unusual word in this circumstance. They will be creative, and we're already seeing people using slings to try and launch the Molotov cocktail further and further. There is an increased amount of gunfire that is clearly not being fired by the military. And what will happen tomorrow? Will they decide to employ different kind of weapons? Or, or tomorrow, it's already tomorrow, uh, as this day gets, gets, uh, gets lighter and lighter. Again, what you are seeing here are live images from downtown Cairo. Richard Engel explaining to us what we are seeing. We believe that these are pro-Mubarak forces up on higher ground uh, over to over to Rear Square on the October 6th, near the, on and near the October 6th bridge, throwing Molotov cocktails down uh, to what they see as the other side of the protests um, below. Molotov cocktails, of course, are just bottles filled with gasoline. You stuff a rag into them, set the rag on fire, and when you throw them, the, the bottle shatters, creates essentially a fire bomb. It's a crude, old, and effective tactic. Brian Williams, the managing editor of NBC's Nightly News, is there on scene with Richard Engel right now. Brian, do you see, like, feel like you are seeing a qualitative escalation of violence, that this is a qualitatively different type of fighting that may require some sort of different response? Uh, well, today it just, it just blew up. You had uh, these, uh, again, they've been called pro-democracy demonstrators who occupied the square. Uh, I saw an interview with an American college student last night who was doing a semester abroad in another country and came here to be part of this, uh, uh, the word happening was used, came here to bear witness to what people assumed going into this morning might be a popular uprising that might just result in a new government. Uh, in Egypt. Uh, then this bizarre series of events, we see a parade of protesters go by, we see the first Hosni Mubarak photos and posters and real numbers of his supporters. They were few and far between this week leading up to this morning. Men on horseback, men on camels, and then we find out it was that leading edge that went right into the breach um, at, at peril to their own uh, safety, we later learned, and started this. And you're hearing this, this din, background noise, is this banging of these makeshift, uh, it looks like half-inch steel, less uh, street level. And uh, the chanting has been going on all night long by both sides. While Richard was talking, and someone down there is also using a laser pointer. That's been going on all night. While Richard was talking, I saw young people come out of the neighborhood beneath the building uh, where we are with replacements, with uh, bottles of gas, with rags coming out the top. They had gone to, to rearm and refuel, however dwindling their army is on this overpass. Uh, and I'm now, as, as daylight starts to come up, I'm now seeing that some of these rounds we're hearing in the background are being fired by what was a lone infantryman standing in front of an armored personnel carrier. They sounded like AK-47 rounds, and I think it's going to turn out that's exactly what they are, the lower caliber uh, rounds. But this is, you hear this rhythmic beating noise from downtown now and going on all night and just revved up again with this latest round of Molotov cocktails. With the Molotov cocktails, Brian, are those, um, are they, as Richard was describing, being able to see them being thrown back and forth? It seems like this may be a weapon of choice of both sides, or is this is something that it really is one, it, it's the pro-Mubarak side and not the anti-Mubarak side? Uh, it's, it's become both sides. To the earlier question, is one side better equipped? Um, and Richard's right. The, the pro-Mubarak forces came in here fixing for a fight today. The other side was was proud of, of themselves for being a kind of peaceful resistance. But um, the, the guys who came in here today on horseback on the back of uh, uh, camels uh, in, in, in groups, Many of them behind a banner, as you would see in an American parade. Some of them had uh, loudspeaker vehicles as part of their gathering, and they were all, come to find out, uh, headed for this square. They all passed in front of our morning uh, camera location before we were able to connect the dots, put the pieces together, and figure out this is kind of a, a, a counter-demonstration.
One of the things that we have been trying to figure out as we've covered this story for the past week is how far Egypt resonates in the rest of the Arab world, in the rest of the Muslim world, and in the rest of the world. We've seen protesters uh, in Egypt explicitly calling out Tunisia as their inspiration. Tunisia, a country where the situation is far from settled, but where the image of the revolution is one that was a people-powered revolution, one that was not led by organized opposition movements, but was led by, in a sense, a populist uprising. Does these, do these images that we're seeing tonight affect the way that Egypt will or won't resonate in other countries around the world? Well, these, these images, part, of, uh, part and parcel of the last few days, and we'll get Richard in here uh, as well, think of Iran. Think of the last attempted citizens uprising there. Think of Yemen. Think of the Saudis. Think of what the King of Jordan did yesterday. And, um, you know, the, the term uh, prairie fire has been used. That's a, a very convenient overstatement and maybe wishful thinking on the part of some people in this region who may not be thinking about, okay, then what next? Uh, but Richard, specifically starting in Tunisia. This is a movement that began in Tunisia, Rachel, and where it will go? This image is one that is designed not just to frighten Egyptians, but to send a message across the region that if people rise up against their governments, the governments will descend and the streets will descend into chaos. And what's so troubling about this is this was clearly started today or provoked today by an organized group that started a fight. They came in charging in on literally on horses to start a fight. Will that escalate? and deep, deep, more deeply among Egyptian people. These people, if you're going to call them the goon squads, also have families, they also have neighbors, they also have friends. The people who got hurt today, six, seven hundred, maybe the number is higher. Some of the protest groups are saying a thousand people injured. Egyptians have big families. So what started out as a group of people instigating a fight could actually start a real uh, a real fight, a real conflict among Egyptians that could have its own energy, and, and that is in, in danger here, that this, is, that this continues and continues out of vengeance and continues out, out of its own momentum. Richard, are you saying that this, this chaos, this violence is, in essence, a strategic victory for Mubarak? Is, is this his strategy for surviving this revolution and staying in power? If you ask the protesters and you ask the protest leaders, and they have been telling me this constantly, this is exactly what Mubarak wanted. He sent in goons to pick a fight. He wants people to see around the world, and he, in Egypt in particular, that Tahrir Square is now burning, that the Egyptian people are fighting among themselves in a country that has enjoyed tremendous stability, economic problems, political problems, but peaceful for a very long time. And he wants everyone to be painted with a negative brush, that everyone involved here are people who want chaos and dissension, and that the president would then need to step in as a good leader to implement law and order. That's what the protesters think the scenario is, and they expect after this there will be a, a, a more serious crackdown, potentially martial law, and even more use of the, of the goon squads.